Welcome to my first vegetable garden. This is the uh, red cabbage that I started from seed. It's uh, April 4th, it's ready to go into the ground. You always want to time your transplants so you can see these uh, roots aren't really coiling in here. They're, you know, coming out, but there's a lot of space. So whenever you start seeds indoors, you want to time it in a way that your transplants won't be root bound in the cups. And again, cabbage is uh, part of a the crops of cool weather vegetables. They can take a frost, they can take a freeze, and they're ready to go into the bed. This is one of my raised beds. I'm planting it in here just to change up. These had peppers and tomatoes in here before. Um, the peppers and tomatoes did get some disease, which is typical for this area, but I like to move the crops around. It'll also be harder for rabbits to get up here. This is about a foot high, a little bit taller, and um, I'm just changing it up basically. So, the instructions say for the red cabbage, plant them every 16 inches apart. When you're doing raised beds, you can plant vegetables a little bit more closely together, um, pack in the vegetables a little bit tighter. And the reason for that is, is this soil is loose all the way down to at least 16 inches, maybe 24 inches. When you loosen up soil in a raised bed and you're not stepping on it, it doesn't get compacted. And this, when, what that means is the root systems can ro grow down really uh, deeply and they don't compete with each other. So you can move them in a little bit more closely together. To get this started, I prepared, turned over my soil, loosened it up, and all I'm doing is digging a planting hole at about 12 inches. And this year I'm gonna try and use all organic fertilizer in my raised beds and earth beds, and it's just one tablespoon into the hole. Mix it in well and that'll be great to get the plant established and going. Take off any roots that are on the bottom. Gently break it up. Just have the roots angling in different directions and drop it in. And you can plant it a little bit deeper. Uh, there's a little bit of stem. Let me dig it out. You can see the little bit of stem right there. You can go ahead and cover that. That'll just make it firmer. The cabbage is gonna form up here in case you've not grown cabbage, cabbage before. So just get it situated, pressed in. And I'm gonna do one more. The other one will go, I guess 24, 36, it'll go right about there. Same thing. You can see how loose the soil is. That's really important in your raised beds. One tablespoon. Mix it in. You never want to set your roots right on top of pure fertilizer. It'll burn them, so always mix it in. Gently squeeze it out. You can see this one's a little bit tighter, but not bad. And again, just gently break it. Let them go in different angles. You can scratch the sides a little bit. Drop that in. And again, whoop, pinch off the bottom leaves. And you can see that it's coming out of the soil right here, I'm going to plant it just a little bit deeper. This way it makes it a little bit more sturdy. Press it in. And then this would get watered in. Now here's the other tip. I get a lot, a lot of slugs and snails in my garden. This is iron ph phosphate. I talked about this in other videos. There aren't any well, the slugs and snails are actually out now that it's warming up, but they're not heavily feeding. I'm not going to wait for them to come and start chewing on my plants. This is iron phosphate. Sprinkle it around now. It's sort of a preemptive strike against the pests in your garden, garden if you know you have them. And that's all you really need to do. When the slugs come, put that on the ground near it. When the slugs come up, they get up here, they're going to eat the bait, it uh, messes with their stomach, their di digestive system shuts down, and they die. So anytime you're dealing with pests, if you know what's coming, if you can do something ahead of time, these will be slug and snail free. The other thing too, I actually did this a little bit backwards, make sure you water your plants first and then drop the slug bait down. Um, this is rainproof, so it can last in the rain for a little bit, but you don't want to soak it down if you don't have to. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out my blog at www.therustedgarden.blogspot.com and also check out my YouTube videos. Thanks.